I am in Northwest Indiana, and this week in two cities, and these two cities believe that they are greater together. Thanks to our underwriters. 20 minute commutes, weekends on the lake, warm welcomes, and exciting career opportunities. Not to mention all the local flavor. There's a lot to look forward to in Wisconsin. Learn more at inwisconsin.com. From the Green Circle Trail to Point Brewery, you'll find more fun in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Heiser Automotive is honored to help John McGivern and his team arrive safely to many main streets. We are committed to remaining true to the Heiser way. Do what's right for our customers, our employees, and the communities we serve. We are happy to help. Wisconsin's picture-perfect, historic downtown Greendale isn't just a great backdrop for photos. It's the perfect place to indulge your hobby or your sweet tooth. Try something new. Shop for a treasure. And eat some really great food. Ask anyone who's made memories here. We'll all tell you the same thing. You just gotta see Greendale. My father taught me that to make great bakery, you have to do it the right way. O&H Danish Bakery, where Kringle traditions begin. At We Energies, we believe communities are stronger when we all work together. For more than 40 years, the We Energies Foundation has supported charitable organizations across Wisconsin. Together, we're creating a brighter future. Looking to bring life to your Wisconsin Dells getaway? Bring your family, bring your friends, bring an extra suit, and bring on the water parks. Summer in Wisconsin Dells. Bring it on! Wisconsin Dells, the water park capital of the world. Wisdells.com. Thanks to the friends of Plum Media and to the friends of PBS Wisconsin. I'm above the Wabash River, and back in the 1800s, the Wabash River was crucial to connecting the Great Lakes to the Mississippi River. Today, I'm on a pedestrian bridge that connects Lafayette to its sister city, West Lafayette, and together, they're known as Greater Lafayette. I'm about 125 miles southeast of Chicago and 65 miles northwest of Indianapolis, and Greater Lafayette, these two cities have a population of about 120,000 people. Emmy, we're in West Lafayette. Yes, we are. Meaning we are on the campus of, of Purdue, Purdue University. University. Yeah. I love a college town. Yeah. So how did it get started? So we're going all the way back to 1862. President Lincoln agreed to give public land to one community in every state who was willing to start a college that specialized in agriculture and engineering. And Lafayette was like, yes, pick me. But it's all thanks to this guy right here. Hey, John. John Purdue, yeah. good name, right? Yeah. He yeah. was a businessman and a philanthropist, and he donated $150,000 oh. to help start the university. There are now over 41,000 Boilermakers. Why the Boilermakers? Boilermakers? It's yeah. a really cute story. Okay. So here's how it started. Okay. So steam engines used to be made here in Indiana. And the fellas who made the boilers for the steam engines, well, they had this reputation of being really large, strong guys. Well, when Purdue's football team played Wabash College back in the late 1800s, they absolutely crushed them. Wabash accused Purdue of recruiting their athletes from the boiler shops, and that's all it took. Some guy in marketing ran with that idea, and I swear he's still patting himself on the back. Are they still making boilers here? That's a really good question. I don't know, but let's go, go take a look. On, let's go ask somebody. We are at the Purdue Food Science Pilot Plant. Our department is known for aseptic processing and packaging. All those products that does not require refrigeration, they are shelf stable, we can make them here. So those shelf safe products that are out there without refrigerator. That's right. Until open. Oh, of course. Then put it in the refrigerator. Huh? I'm always what? like, come on, how <laughs> does this work? If you open the package, yeah. now it's in the environment and environment contains microorganisms, right? Were you gonna wait for me to guess that? That's right. <laughs> John, come on. Me? Look at me like, <laughs> now you tell me what it is. No, just keep talking. Feel like Roger. I'm teaching. You are, you are so, teaching. Uh, I have been working with entrepreneurs and food manufacturers. They will bring a recipe, say, well, 
this is my grandma's recipe. How can I take it to the retail? How can I sell it so people can buy and enjoy it? They don't know what is the food safety behind it. Right. They don't know how to manufacture it. We are helping from the recipe all the way up to a retail ready product. Is there something that you're excited about that you're working on right now? To make extruded products. This is mini cereal balls. We can also make snack sticks. And then we have the dog treats here. It's not for you, John. <laughs> <It's> not... <laughs> One of the coolest thing that we are doing right now, we are developing ice cream. Uh, this is the part of food science I love. This was developed right here. It's, it's espresso. It's delicious. We're still on the campus of Purdue, it looks like. We're in a library of sorts. Well, we're in the food science department, yeah. and, and my science is called enology, the enology. science of wine. And, and so to give our Purdue students the final polish when they before they go into the big wild world, we'll teach them about how to appreciate wine and the culture, the religion, the politics, uh, everything yeah. that comes with it. Do you celebrate Indiana wine here? Yes, I mean, Indiana wine has been made for over 200 years. Is that um, right? The first places in the United States in the early 1800s where wine was made. And, and it's such an important industry here. We have more than 100 wineries in Indiana alone. So it's a wine appreciation class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. how many students do you have this semester? Uh, almost 600 this semester alone. And uh, so it's a very popular class, yeah. uh, uh, trying something that you haven't had before. Yeah. That's what wine appreciation is all about. Uh, don't let anybody else tell you what you like or right. what to drink. If you like it, great. If not, move on to the next bottle. So That's a lesson in everything. Cheers. You were great. There are actually three downtown districts that make up Greater Lafayette. The first, the one we're standing in, is the Wabash Riverfront. It's known for concerts and festivals and outdoor fun. Then there's Chauncey Village, which has this hip Purdue vibe. And then the Arts and Market District, which is known for galleries and museums and theaters. And since I'm in the Wabash Riverfront, I guess this is the first one I'll just go take a look at. That sculpture is called The Flame, and this sculpture is called What Lines? And they are considered the gateway to downtown Lafayette, and Main Street runs right in between them. We're at this beautiful home called the Han Museum of Indiana Art. Talk about the history of this house. Okay, so this was the Connecticut building at the World's Fair in St. Louis in 1904. And at the end of the fair, they auctioned it off. So they took it apart and moved it here by the Wabash Railroad. We're the only the second family to ever live here. A lot of parts are taken from 1760 houses in Norwich, Connecticut. So mm. the entire front entryway and a lot of the interior woodwork are actually from before the Declaration of Independence. Amazing. In 2007, 2008, we decided it was time to make a museum. And your commitment in collecting was always to Indiana artists? It we was. made that decision to start with. If, if this group of our best artists had gone to New York, they would be top American artists, but they chose to stay in Indiana, which we were very fortunate. This one is painted by T.C. Steele, Indiana's most important native artist that stayed in Indiana. All the furniture is American furniture, mostly 1860 to 1890. Nice. We had a clock we were looking for, and then we ran into this. It winds up like this. Each one of these cylinders plays six different songs. But my favorite is the birds hitting the bells. The artist that made these was born in Zimbabwe, Africa, and he learned his art over there, and then he came to Indianapolis about 25 years ago. Wooten Desk Company. So built when, do we know? About 1875. John Rockefeller and Queen Victoria bought one. That's the class of people that were interested in these desks. We had the desk for 10 years <laughs> before we knew it had a secret compartment. This drawer is short, yeah, and you could, you could put your, your secret stuff behind there. The sculpture garden went in in 2016. All the sculptures are by Indiana sculpture artists. Do you miss living here, you guys? No. 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 <laughs> OK, no. Bob, do you want to think about well, it? Well, <laughs> let, me tell you, let, me let me tell you why. Right. When we bought it, it was a mess. All we did was work on the house. Right. When we say we don't miss living here, we get to come anytime we want to. We still get to visit everything. How great that you honor this state and you honor those who gave to this state. It's great. Well, thank you so much. These cities are named after the French general, Marquis de Lafayette, who was the commander of the final battle of the Revolutionary War. But do you have any idea how many cities, villages, or towns are named after General Lafayette? Hmm? Well, if your guess is like, yeah, maybe a dozen, not even close, 73. 
73 towns, cities, or villages named after Lafayette. And that's just the start. Oh, also 11 high schools, four hotels, a theater, and just a minor planet in the solar system's asteroid belt. I guess that's how you know when you've made it, when your legacy reaches space. John, yeah. any guesses who this young man is? It's Neil Armstrong. How did you know that? Ah, oh, you weren't supposed to look. He graduated from here. He did, but he's not in a space suit or and something. That's what I think is so cool. They wanted yeah. students to walk by him and think, gosh, I could be Neil Armstrong. That looks like me. So yeah, inspiring. Yeah, it is cool. So do you have any idea how many um, astronauts graduated from this university? Mm, I'm going to say um, 11. 26. <gasps> 26 graduates. I hear they have a moon rock in here. They I have a moon rock. That. Apollo 1, a replica. That's very cool. And the um, and the moon steps, did you love those? Weren't you surprised how big the moon boots actually are? That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Triple X was the root beer, yes? Yes. yes. Because who calls their restaurant Triple X? So I love you <laughs> asked me that. Help me. So let I'm me like, oh my God, what's going on here? So 1895 X, that was a good connotation. So 1X was good, 2X was better, 3X is the, the best, best, the highest grade. And sorry, dear, but you are old enough to watch the Roadrunner. X's <laughs> are still on sugar bags, gunpowder bags, and flour bags. So once I tell people that, they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And it does. But, but before I love that, that it's you... triple X, X, X. X. So I, it's... I know. <laughs> it's not... it's people... exponentially good. It's people so say that... X. Listen, I didn't come up with a name. We're keeping it. Yeah, we're keeping yeah, it. We're keeping yeah. it. Do you like peanut butter? Yes. Would you like to try the Purvis Burger, which is our number one selling Purvis. burger? Named after Dwayne Purvis, who played for Purdue in 32 to 34. And it's a peanut butter burger? Peanut butter yes. burger. Who's going to teach me? You guys? Me. Oh, uh, good. He, you he, are? Yeah. yeah. This was actually started as a triple X root beer thirst station. So they're franchised? Like they were franchised at that time. Yeah. Really? yeah. Similar. Well, and this is the last one standing. standing. Uh -huh. uh, and it opened when? 1929, originally. So, uh, when did you start working here? In 1968. Oh, I was 14. Food-wise, what, what did it start off? Steak burger. Steak, we call steak them chopped steaks. This is our top choice sirloin. These are all weighed and ready to go. Initial flatten, and then finger tip it. Finger tip it. There you go. But the burgers are the signature piece, along with the root beer. Right. I love the sign, triple X chopped steak. Chopped steak. Oh, uh, hello. I <laughs> know. It is. It is chopped steak. That's so reminiscent of well, the and, and I added the family restaurant because I moved here in 1989, and I was his sales rep for advertising, and he was very much like, well, everybody knows who, who we are. I'm, yeah, I'm the triple X. And I said. <laughs> true. That's true. I said, um, you're going to have to maybe do something with the name. She was right. You know, so that. He's like, I need I need to marry this girl. She just insulted me. So. <laughs> Perfect. OK. It's places like this that you really can't change much. Or no. people are like, oh, no. Oh, oh sweetie. I, I, That's ridiculous. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. I love some onion on mine. A little bit of onion? A little Jeez. bit of onion. Peanut butter cheeseburgers. Look at these. I love this part. Anyway. Oh, look at this. Dude, that looks perfect right here. Isn't that awesome? And the, the peanut butter's running on my hand right now. Yeah, which is part of the appeal, yeah, yes? it is. OK, here yeah. we go. You kind of eat it and wear it. Who would have thought? This is a peanut butter root beer jelly cheeseburger. Come on. <laughs> West Lafayette, it's a tradition, and I'm glad to follow it right here. Mm. This is the Tippecanoe Battlefield and Museum. This monument behind me marks the site of the 1811 Battle of Tippecanoe. So that was between the Native American forces and the US troops, which was led by that gentleman up there, future President William Henry Harrison. The battle that was fought right here is considered by some as the unofficial start to the War of 1812. What's really neat about this museum, they pay tribute to both sides of the battle. It is really well done. Who is Prophet in Prophetstown? Yeah, so Prophet was an, a Native American in this area. So this land now is a part of the state park system. 
And the farm at Prophetstown Park, is this farm always been here? No, this was all fields uh, in 1998, and several people got together and wanted to preserve 1920s farmsteads. So what, what's on this farm that is reminiscent to that area? Oh yeah, so you have the original farmhouse. This is a replica of a 1920s Sears and Roebuck home that could have been purchased and built on site. You're gonna have uh, all the antiques, the feel, the smells, everything that you would experience in the 1920s. Robin. Your, She's fantastic. Your feet are brilliant. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Countless number of visitors come to the farm and say, this was just like grandma's house when I visited. Except my grandma's was much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a tenant house that is an actual 1920s Sears and Roebuck home. This is an actual? It is. I believe this house would have been $850. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And they would ship it to you? Amazon has nothing on Sears and Roebuck. Come on. <laughs> it's the first. Yeah, so here you go. <laughs> oh, this looks great. All of our animals on site are going to be heritage breeds. They're going to be animals that you would have seen on the farm in 1920s. All right. So JJ's everyone's favorite. Come on, JJ. Come on. Come on. Here we go. And you made a new friend. This is Georgia. She's usually fairly friendly. Hi, Georgia. I gave my apple to the donkey. <laughs> hey, pig. Pigs are smart. They're fat. And they're fat. Yep, they make the best bacon. So right now we have three cows. These are Herefords. <laughs> Look at you. That's fun. Oh, it's fun. You want to drive it? Can I? Yeah. People who farmed in the 20s survived off everything that happened at the farm. They're it, eager. It was homesteading. Right. And that's what's going on. That is. Yeah. What are you looking at? <laughs> yep, every day. Why is it important to preserve this moment? Because it's going away. That's the importance of it. Farm life. Not sure if it would have been for me. My hands smell like pigs right now. 25% of the workforce here in this area is involved in the manufacturing industry, and that has helped Greater Lafayette become one of the fastest income growth cities in the entire country. Isn't that amazing? This is the beautiful Tippecanoe County Courthouse. Back in 1859, 20,000 people gathered here to witness a new way to transport the U.S. mail. Can you guess what that was? Okay, I'll give you a hint. It was a lofty idea. In 1859, John Wise, a Lafayette resident, attempted to deliver 123 letters by airmail. That's right, all the way to New York. The plan was to fly these letters in his balloon that he named Jupiter, except Mother Nature got in the way. The trip ended early and really ended airmail altogether until actual airplanes in 1911. Mr. Wise, that's why you use your weather app. Duh. We're at Wolf Park. When did this start and how did it start? Dr. Klinghammer, who was a ethologist out at Purdue, wanted to study some wolves. Back in 1972, there weren't a lot of wolves around. So yeah. he started Wolf Park. He got this property, got some wolves, and started studying them. And then it just grew over the past 51 years. All of the animals we have at Wolf Park are native or historically native to Indiana. So there's bison? We there have bison. Wolf. We I have saw wolf. a fox on my way over here. We have two species of fox. Oh, you do? How many acres on this property? About 25 acres of of the property, and then we also have about another 50 acres of bison fields. Wolves shy of people? Wolves are neophobic, which is one of my favorite science words, meaning that they are afraid of new or novel things. Okay. Step one in any process when working with an animal, if you want to do it properly, is to get to know them. We can step right inside of this one, but we'll stay towards this, okay. this side of the fence. So this would be a training session, and they're trying to do what with them? What Lauren is trying to work Ooh, with right now. Did you hear that? <laughs> Choppers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nico does have a very loud snap. What Lauren is doing with Sparrow is she's uh, a behavior where we ask for the chin. And this is basically so Sparrow can help participate in her own veterinary care. And then she'll say, for example, um, uh, teeth. So now she can look up and look at her teeth. Now, if Sparrow removes her chin, Lauren will stop. And Nico, he doesn't like to train as much, but he does like the food, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the pups. <gasps> They're just working on simple behaviors, and they also know that they don't have to work with us. You're such a good boy. 
And this is actually really good for them also. We, this is part of their socialization process. Why are they hauling? This is called a rally. And basically this is just kind of all get together and have fun. <laughs> Take me down to the Paradise City. Is that where I am? Yes, it is because Axl Rose, the lead singer of Guns N' Roses, he went to high school right here at Jefferson Lafayette High School. That's right, home of the Broncos. So Paradise City, the song, talks about the differences between Axl's stardom in California and his Midwest upbringing right here in the Midwest. So he even comes back to the neighborhood once in a while for a good slice of Arnie's pizza. Yum. Where is that? Okay, my new favorite place in the whole world, McCord Candies. Yeah, it opened its doors in 1912, and it looks the same, it really does. And it's everything in the shop that made me a chubby eight-year-old. They have a soda fountain, they serve phosphates. Do you know what phosphate is? It's charged soda water with a syrup. So as a kid, we used to go to Oakland Serving Pharmacy on Oakland and Hampshire and Milwaukee and have a green river. That was a phosphate. I went on a binge. It's a soda mm -hmm. During Christmas, they make their own candy canes. I wish I was here at Christmas, but um, since I'm not, I'm just going to enjoy what I enjoyed as a kid. So the wax bottles, and then what are you supposed to do with the wax? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to make myself <laughs> some dentures. So when we told people we were coming to see Tom Turpin, they said, you mean the Buck Guy? So that's how you're referred to in town. Do you know that? My grandkids call me Grandpa Bug. Grandpa Bug? Yeah. I started some activities to popularize the discipline of entomology or the study of insects. Yeah. And These are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. cockroaches. So we've got a couple adults and so Some babies. Babies. This is a leaf insect. You'll notice it wobbles a little bit, just like a leaf in the wind. All scorpions glow. That fluorescent that blue? color. Yeah. These are ones we can't take out. What are they? They are assassin bugs. OK. We had bug bowl here at Purdue, started my class. And we had the students were cooking insects. You cook insects? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And some guy was standing there and said, you know, I couldn't put one of those crickets in my mouth. If I did, I'd spit it from here to that tree. And I thought, maybe a contest next year at Bug Bowl. Well, first, you got to see the crickets. They're dead, right? Yeah, they're dead. OK. They're, they're, they're frozen. They're not really frozen. Well, they're not frozen. They're thawed. They're thawed. They select the cricket. I did. Guinness World Record is 32 feet, one and a quarter inches. Well, we'll see. You then put it in your mouth. Are you sure this thing isn't alive? It seems no, no, to be no, it's moving. not alive. Okay, here we go. It's, it's, you may now step into the circle, and you have 30 seconds to spit that direction. Mm -hmm. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's better than 10 feet. Well, probably. Uh, we're going to try it again. Hey, I did better, though. Oh, you did. 12 feet. 12 feet. Whoa. <laughs> I'm the record breaker today. <laughs> this activity here with Bug Bowl and the Bug Barn began to popularize entomology all around the country. Yeah. And I'm told now there are about 130 insect kind of activities like Bug Bowl where people come in to get acquainted. But this is where it started. It started here. It did. Yeah. You can tell with all that on your face. What, what's hanging up? <laughs> strategy. <laughs> it is strategy. Uh, sorry, Tom, but um, oh. I beat the frass out of you. Oh. <laughs> hey, that was fun. Hey, good. In the greater Lafayette, let's sum it up. All right, we could say three great districts, and two beautiful cities, one stellar university. What else is there? Zero complaints. Oh, that's that was a great, <laughs> great way to end. There's no one else I'd rather be the heart and soul of communities right here. We want to put you to work. No. I'm going to put Nobody's an apron really over there. To you right now. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> You're just so Ooh, One was on the bottom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> the museum pays tribute to both sides of the aisle. 
not the aisle. <laughs> a battle. One rooster may have seven or eight hens that they do their rooster things with. <laughs> Might want to cut that out, but you'll... No, that's going to make air. I you'll... love that. Does the rooster things. You go, Coco. <laughs> now I got to pee. <laughs> Thanks to our underwriters. 20-minute commutes, weekends on the lake, warm welcomes, and exciting career opportunities. Not to mention all the local flavor. There's a lot to look forward to in Wisconsin. Learn more at inwisconsin.com. From the Green Circle Trail to Point Brewery, you'll find more fun in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Heiser Automotive is honored to help John McGivern and his team arrive safely to many main streets. We are committed to remaining true to the Heiser way. Do what's right for our customers, our employees, and the communities we serve. We are happy to help. Wisconsin's picture-perfect, historic downtown Greendale isn't just a great backdrop for photos. It's the perfect place to indulge your hobby or your sweet tooth. Try something new. Shop for a treasure. And eat some really great food. Ask anyone who's made memories here. We'll all tell you the same thing. You just gotta see Greendale. My father taught me that to make great bakery, you have to do it the right way. O&H Danish Bakery, where Kringle traditions begin. At We Energies, we believe communities are stronger when we all work together. For more than 40 years, the We Energies Foundation has supported charitable organizations across Wisconsin. Together, we're creating a brighter future. Looking to bring life to your Wisconsin Dells getaway? Bring your family, bring your friends, bring an extra suit, and bring on the water parks. Summer in Wisconsin Dells. Bring it on! Wisconsin Dells, the water park capital of the world. Wisdells.com. Thanks to the friends of Plum Media and to the friends of PBS Wisconsin. When I have my brown statue, don't make my eye go in the soup. 